All right, guys, I had an email come in for a question for our YouTube Q&A, and uh, this is our second one here, but I had uh, Julia ask if, how do I find the center of a belt when you're going to put a name in the back or if you're going to put something in the back here. I have an ebook um, on our website that you're more welcome to check out. Um, it's five bucks. It's got a lot of information in there like this. Um, but if you're laying out your belts, and I talk about that in there as far as cutting them out and putting your marks on there for your artwork and stuff like that. As far as putting all your marks on there and, and that sort of thing in the ebook, I talk about, you know, once you get, get your belt cut, and that, that's the first thing, is how do you know what size or what length to cut your belt? The way I do it um, is real simple. Whatever they're, I take a measurement on the belt that they're wearing from the bend, and the bend is the point at which it folds around the buckle and snaps shut. So we don't unsnap this, we take their existing belt and measure from this point here, just hook your tape here, not including the buckle length, we don't use that, and we measure from there to whatever hole that they're wearing that belt in. And it doesn't matter if it, they're in the tightest hole or the loosest hole or a hole that they added. So once we get that measurement, and whatever it is, say it's 34, um, from bend to the hole that they wear it in on their belt, then I take and add 10 and a half inches to that. So I would cut their belt 44 and a half inches. That's cut length. That's what the belt blank should be cut at. Once that's cut and your ends are docked, you can you can do your ends however you want to do them, but once that's done, then I come in and put my marks in and that tells me where the artwork goes. And the one thing that I do, Julia, is the first thing is on my belt is I decide which end is going to be the bend and which end is going to be the tip or which, you know, which end is going to be that. So what, once I decide that, and I usually do it based on the strength of the leather, you know, if this end's a little spongier, this would be my fold end. Um, I want the nice firm end on the tip, and that way, that that because the tip's going to take all the abuse going in and out of the buckle. Um, it's exposed. It's hanging out there. It's going to get it's going to get beat up. So I want it. I want it definitely good leather. But once I know what end I'm going to do the bend on, and this is the first thing. Always get in the habit of laying your belt down. I don't care if you're going to glue it, you're dyeing it, whatever you're doing. Lay it down left to right, and belts run left to right, bend to end. And if you'll get in the habit of always setting the belt down, and when I show it to customers, I set it down that way. If you get in that habit, then you don't make the mistake of accidentally having your belt the wrong direction and tooling your name in the back or your initials upside down. So the initials aren't so much a problem, but the name in the back, I have made belts, and they've come out wrong because when they put them on, the name's upside down. So if you just get in the habit, of putting your belt down left to right, bend on your left, tip on your right. And you can move it while you're working on it, but if you're doing layout and stuff, just be mindful the bend should always be to your left. Once that's done, we've got that decided, I come in from my bend end and I come in three and a half inches and I put a mark. Usually with my pencil, I'll just come in here and I'll put a three and a half inch mark. That's going to be the center of my bag punch that I punch for the buckle. So that right there is actually, should be where it folds. That should be where the bend is on this belt when we're done. So I put that three and a half inch mark in there. Then I come down to my tip end and I measure in seven inches. And at seven inches I put a mark. If, you're, if you cut your belts like I do and you do the 10 and a half added to their bend to, bend to hole measurement, that, that'll give you, the, from, the, from that 7 inch mark, that's a 7 inch tip, and that's pretty good out of all the belts we've built. That seems to be the best number for tip length. It gets enough past that first belt loop to where you can see the initials, but it's not so much hanging out there that the tip wants to fall over or gets too abused. Sometimes I'll do an 8 inch tip if a guy wants a little more out there, or say you have three initials or a big brand, I'll kind of, I'll do an 8 inch. 8 inch is okay, but I would prefer 7. 7 just seems like it fits a little better and looks better. And if your measurements are right, they should be in that 7 mark. So that 7 inches from tip to there is going to be where that middle hole is going to be. So I put five holes in all our belts, and that center hole. If we did everything correctly when they put their buckle on it and put this belt on for the first time, they should be in this hole, that center hole. So that gives them two holes in and two holes out to be able to adjust depending on clothing or weight gain or loss or whatever. So that's what we go for. So we've got our seven inch, our, our bend, uh, center hole mark of seven inches from the end, and we've got our three and a half mark on the bend end. What that gives us is from bend to the seven inch mark is the actual belt size. So that is your actual belt. 
the amount of bin that you have and the amount of tip that you have has nothing to do with the name being centered in the back. That's, uh, that's independent of all that. So the actual belt size is from the bend mark to the seven inch mark. And so that right there is your actual belt length or basically what's gonna be around their waist. So from that measurement then, we can take that and split that difference and that'll give us a true center of the belt. So if we do that, and I, always, I, I just got in the habit of doing this just to make sure that all my math has been right through the process. So I know I did three and a half here, seven here. If we did our measurements right, it should be the belt bend to hole measurement. But I always check it just to make sure, make sure I didn't goof up and cut the wrong belt. So I'll go to our seven inch. And this particular belt is a 37. But so this is a 37 inch belt from the bend mark to the center hole mark. And so basically we can just split that difference and um, let's have 37. No, 18 and a half. So 18 and a half would be our center. And then what I'll do again, just to check your math, I grew up, I grew up in the country, so my math's a little slow. So I always just check, make sure they're both the same. So that right there is actually the center of our belt is that 30 or 18 and a half inch mark from the three and a half inch mark over here the bend mark um, so basically what if we were to measure just the belt blank that is not center of the belt blank so from the bend tip to there is 22 inches from the tip of the belt blank to here is 25 and a quarter or 25 and a half so that's not center of the belt blank it's center of the belt if you go center of the belt blank, your name will be off. It will be more to the right when the person's wearing it than it will be centered. And so that's where a lot of people get confused is they think, well, center, center the name in the back, center the name on the belt blank, and it'll be good. No, because you're losing three and a half when you fold this side over, and you've got seven inches hanging out of the buckle on this side. Not really seven, but you've got, you know, you've got some hanging out on this side. So you've got to find true center of the belt. And so on a 37 inch belt, that's true center. So once I have that mark there, obviously we would be working with a raw piece of leather. This belt is already tooled, so we can't put a name in here. But if this was a raw piece of leather, I would have a center mark here. So I would have all three of my marks, which I need. And this is just a good habit to get into even when you're laying out a belt. If you're freehanding a pattern, that way you can space out your flowers and your leaves and stuff and have them balanced. Um, you don't have to, but you could, you know, and if you want other figures in there or something like that, you could balance them. So if we wanted, say they wanted a brand on each hip on the back side of each hip, you can basically now come from center line to the bend mark, so that would be 18 and a half. You could split that, which would be nine and a quarter, so that would be basically the center of your side, or the center of your hip, theoretically. So then if you want it on behind the hip, you would just come back towards the center just a little bit. That's kind of hard to hit just perfect, but you can kind of eyeball, you know, about where it's going to land and so it's on the back of the hip or whatever. Um, so that, that those three marks give you a lot of layout options when you're laying your belt out. And so then if your name, what I always do is get a little piece of scrap paper and write their name. <clears throat> so we were going to do Gonzalez on the back of this belt. Old school. But if we were to do Gonzalez on the back, I would find center of my name. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight letters in my last name. So center would be at, in between the Z and the A, which would give me four letters on each side. In different letters, you may have to adjust a little bit. An I, if you're doing a straight I, doesn't take up as much space as say a G would or something like that. So, but you can basically get an idea of how wide you want your name. So then at that point, I'll start in the center and I'll do the Z and then the N, O, and G, and then I'll come and I'll measure that, see how far out that went, and then whatever that is, say it's three inches, I'll come back on the other side of my center and I'll put me a mark at three inches, and then that way I can draw the A, L, E, S in there and make it to where it's the same size. Because even though you found the center mark, if you don't center the name on there, you have some trouble. Now if you're using Photoshop or Word or something to lay out your letters, that's even easier because then you can print them out exactly the way you want to trace them off or the way you want to tool them. And then you can just take your measuring tape and measure it on the paper, see how long that word is. You've already sized it to fit the belt. You measure that, put a center mark on it, line it up with your center mark and trace it off. It'll be perfect. If you freehand your letters like me, 
that's a technique I use um, is just to, to just go go there if, you, if you're doing that you, you've got to kind of lay them in and then measure one side or the other to make sure that they come out about the same one little side note if, if the, per, the customer wants a brand say they want their initials on the tip their name in the back and a brand and you're trying to figure out how do you space those three things on there and make it look good, you've got to remember that this is going to be worn. So how are we going to lay those out? You would think just right off that you would put the name in the middle, put the initials on the tip out here, and then put the brand over here somewhere. The reason I don't do that if I can help it as far as putting the brand on the left side over here, you would think laying flat on the bench that you've got one, one, one. You got three different things and they're balanced. You got a brand, you got a name, and you got initials. They're balanced. The problem is, is they're going to put that belt on. Now when they do, you have initials, brand, and name. You have nothing on this side of that person. So what I like to do is put my brand over here. So laying flat on the bench, it looks funny because you'll have a name, and then a brand, and then initials. So everything looks lopsided like it's on this side of the belt only. But like I said, once they put it on, now your initials are on their left side, the brand's on their right side, and the name's in the back. So that gives you a good balance placement of the figures. And so try to keep that in mind. Sometimes belts can get, be a little bit uh, different on that, and you don't think about it until the customer comes or until you see them wearing it, and you're like, man, everything's on that one side or it looks lopsided or it just doesn't, you know, I don't have enough flowers over there compared to over here. So just kind of keep that in mind. But I hope that helped, Julia. I mean, as far as finding the center, biggest thing is, like I said, don't, it's not center of your belt blank. It's the center of the belt. And the belt measurement is bend to center hole. Get a chance to look at that, uh, that ebook. Um, I'm gonna actually send you a copy of it, Julia. I've got your email address now, so I'm gonna send you a free copy of it so that you can look through it. It's got a lot of good, helpful information in there. It shows you how I take a side of leather and block it out so that I don't waste too much leather when I'm cutting my belts and stuff, how to straight edge them, how to prep them. Um, I, pre I prep them with some stiffener on the back so they don't stretch on me. It goes through a lot of that process and stuff, so I'm gonna send that to you for free. And I really appreciate you sending me that question because I get that question a lot and I see a lot of guys make belts and the names aren't quite centered. Now, if you get a bad measurement from a customer, that's not your fault. Um, I'm very adamant about making sure that people know how to measure and there is a, a section on my, on my front page of my website. If you go there in the menu bar, it says measure, how to measure for a belt or something like that. It, well, that is a video that I did that shows you exactly how to measure how, how, you can use it for your own customers if you want, um, but it shows them exactly the measurement that I need and they can see it and sometimes it's hard to explain to them over the phone. They don't know what the bend is and that sort of thing, but it, it shows you exactly how to get the measurement. And as long as you get a good measurement, all these measurements should be perfect. Um, you may toggle a hole or two, you know, one way or the other. Well, hopefully not two, but you should. You may toggle one or so, depending on the height, uh, the, the jeans that they're wearing, the low-rise jeans versus higher-waisted jeans, can affect the size. So you've got that kind of going against you. But in general, it really simplifies the belt making process. So I appreciate your questions. Um, Y'all send me some more. If you've got any other, um, having some trouble with something or whatever, just send me a question um, on email. And you can contact us from our website um, at dgsaddlery.com. And be sure to put YouTube Q&A in there if you want me to try to answer one of your questions on our channel. And we appreciate y'all watching. Subscribe to our channel.